Meditations of the state of a Christian reconciled to God in Christ. Now let us see how happy a godly man is in his state of renovation, being reconciled to God in Christ. The godly man whose corrupt nature is renewed by grace in Christ and become a new creature, is blessed in a threefold respect, first, in his life, secondly, in his death, thirdly, after death. I. His blessedness during his life is but in part, and that consists in seven things. 1. Because he is conceived of the Spirit, and is born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, who in Christ is his Father, so that the image of God his Father is renewed in him every day more and more. 2. He has, for the merits of Christ's sufferings, all his sins, original and actual, with a guilt and punishment belonging to them, freely and fully forgiven him, and all the righteousness of Christ is freely and fully imputed to him, and so God is reconciled to him, and approveth him as righteous in his sight and account. 3. He is freed from Satan's bondage, and is made a brother of Christ, a fellow heir of his heavenly kingdom, and a spiritual king and priest, to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God by Jesus Christ. 4. God spareth him as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. And this sparing consists in 1. Not taking notice of every fault, but bearing with his infirmities. A loving father will not cast his child out of doors in his sickness. 2. Not making his punishment, when he is chastened, as great as his deserts. 3. Chastening him moderately when he seeth that he will not by any other means be reclaimed. 4. Graciously accepting his endeavors, notwithstanding the imperfection of his obedience, and so preferring the willingness of his mind before the worthiness of his work. 5. Turning the curses which he deserved to crosses and fatherly corrections, yea, all things, all calamities of this life, death itself, yea, his very sins, to his good. 5. God gives him his Holy Spirit, which 1. Sanctifies him by degrees throughout, so that he more and more dies to sin and lives to righteousness. 2. Assures him of his adoption, and that he is by grace the child of God. 3. Encourages him to come with boldness and confidence into the presence of God. 4. Moves him without fear to say unto him, Abba, Father. 5. Pours into his heart the gift of sanctified prayer. 6. Persuades him that both he and his prayers are accepted and heard of God, for Christ his mediator's sake. 7. Fills him with, first, peace of conscience, second, joy in the Holy Ghost, in comparison whereof all earthly joys seem vain and vile to him. 6. He has a recovery of his sovereignty over the creatures, which he lost by Adam's fall and from thence free liberty of using all things which God hath not restrained, so that he may use them with a good conscience. For to all things in heaven and earth he hath a sure title in this life, and he shall have the plenary and peaceable possession of them in the life to come. Hence it is that all reprobates are but usurpers of all that they possess, and have no place of their own, but hell. 7. He has the assurance of God's fatherly care and protection day and night over him, which care consists in three things. 1 in providing all things necessary for his soul and body, concerning this life, and that which is to come, so that he shall be sure ever either to have enough, or patience to be content with that he hath. 2. In that God, gives his holy angels, as ministers, a charge to attend upon him always for his good, yea, in danger to pitch their tents about him for his safety wherever he be. Yea, God's protection shall defend him as a cloud by day, and as a pillar of fire by night, and his providence shall hedge him from the power of the devil. 3 in that the eyes of the Lord are upon him, and his ears continually open, to see his state, and to hear his complaint, and in his good time to deliver him out of all his troubles. Thus far of the blessed state of the godly and regenerate man in this life. Now of his blessed state in death. 2. Meditations of the blessed state of a regenerate man in his death. When God sends death as his messenger for the regenerate man, he meets him halfway to heaven, for his conversation and affection is there before him. Death is never strange nor fearful to him not strange, because he died daily, not fearful, because whilst he lived, he was dead, and his life was hid with Christ in God, to die, therefore, is to him nothing else in effect, but to rest from his labor in this world, to go home to his father's house, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. Whilst his body is sick, his mind is sound, for God maketh his bed in sickness, and strengthened him with faith and patience, upon his bed of sorrow. And when he begins to enter into the way of all the world, he giveth, like Jacob, Moses, and Joshua, to his children and friends, godly exhortations and counsels, to serve the true God, to worship him truly all the days of their life. His blessed soul breatheth nothing but blessings, and such speeches as savour a sanctified spirit. As his outward man decayeth, so his inward man increaseth, and waxeth stronger, when the speech of his tongue faltereth, the sighs of his heart speak louder unto God. When the sight of the eyes faileth, the Holy Ghost illuminates him inwardly with abundance of spiritual light. His soul feareth not, but is bold to go out of the body, and to dwell with her Lord.
He sigh out with Paul, Cupio de Solvi, I desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ, Phil. I. 23. And with David, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Sal. Zlai. 2. He prayeth with the saints, How long, O Lord, which art holy and true? Rev. Vi. 10. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly, Rev. Zxai. 10. And when the appointed time of his dissolution is come, knowing that he goeth to his Father and Redeemer in the peace of a good conscience, and the assured persuasion of the forgiveness of all his sins, in the blood of the Lamb, he sings with blessed old Simeon his nunc dimittis, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, and surrenders up his soul, as it were, with his own hands, into the hands of his heavenly Father, sick saying with David, into thy hands, O Father, I commend my soul, for thou hast redeemed me. O Lord, thou God of truth, Sal. Sxi. 5. And saying with Stephen, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, Acts vi. 59. He no sooner yields up the ghost, but immediately the holy angels who attended upon him from his birth to his death, carry and accompany his soul into heaven, as they did the soul of Lazarus into Abraham's bosom, which is the kingdom of heaven, whither only good angels and good works do accompany the soul, the one to deliver their charge, the other to receive their reward. The body, in convenient time, as the sanctified temple of the Holy Ghost, the members of Christ, nourished by his body, the price of the blood of the Son of God, is by his fellow brethren, reverently laid to sleep in the grave as in the bed of Christ. In an assured hope to awake in the resurrection of the just, at the last day, to be partaker, with the soul, of life and glory everlasting. And in this respect not only the souls, but the very bodies of the faithful also are termed blessed. Thus far of the blessedness of the soul and body of the regenerate man in death. Now let us see the blessedness of this soul and body after death. 3. Meditations of the blessed state of the regenerate man after death. This estate has three degrees. First, from the day of death to the resurrection. Second, from the resurrection to the pronouncing of the sentence. 3d, after the sentence, which lasts eternally. As soon as ever the regenerate man hath yielded up his soul to Christ, the holy angels take her into their custody, and immediately carry her into heaven, and there present her before Christ, where she is crowned with a crown of righteousness and glory not which she hath deserved by her good works, but which God hath promised of his free goodness to all those who, of love, have in this life unfeignedly served him, and sought his glory. Oh, what joy will it be to thy soul, which was wont to see nothing but misery and sinners, now to behold the face of the God of glory. Yea, to see Christ welcoming thee, as soon as thou art presented before him by the holy angels, with an huge bone serve. Well done, and welcome good and faithful servant, etc., enter into thy master's joy. And what joy will this be, to behold thousand thousands of cherubims, seraphims, angels, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all the holy patriarchs, priests, prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and all the souls of thy friends, parents, husbands, wives, children, and the rest of God's saints, who departed before thee in the true faith of Christ, standing before God's throne in bliss and glory. If the Queen of Sheba, beholding the glory and attendance given to Solomon, as it were ravished therewith, break out and said, Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand ever before thee, and hear thy wisdom. How shall thy soul be ravished to see herself by grace, admitted to stand with this glorious company, to behold thy blessed face of Christ, and to hear all the treasures of his divine wisdom, how shalt thou rejoice to see so many thousand thousands welcoming thee into their heavenly society? For as they all rejoiced at thy conversion, so will they now be much more joyful to behold thy coronation, and to see thee receive thy crown, which was laid up for thee against thy coming. There the crown of martyrdom shall be put on the head of the martyr, who for Christ's gospel's sake endured torments, the crown of piety on the head of them who sincerely professed Christ, the crown of good works on the good arms giver's head, who liberally relieved the poor. The crown of incorruptible glory on the head of those pastors, who by their preaching and good example, have converted souls from the corruption of sin, to glorify God in holiness of life. Who can sufficiently express the rejoicing of this heavenly company, to see thee thus crowned with glory, arrayed with the shining robes of righteousness, and to behold the palm of victory put into thy hand? Oh, what gratulation will there be, that thou hast escaped to all the miseries of the world, the snares of the devil, the pains of hell, and obtained within thy eternal rest and happiness? For there every one joyeth as much in another's happiness as in his own, because he shall see him as much loved of God as himself, yea, they have as many distinct joys as they have co-partners of their joy. And in this joyful and blessed state, the soul resteth with Christ in heaven to the resurrection, when the number of her fellow servants and brethren shall have been fulfilled, which the Lord termeth but a little season. The second degree of man's blessedness after death, is from the resurrection to the pronouncing of the final sentence. For at the last day, 1. The elementary heavens, earth, and all things therein, shall be dissolved, and purified with fire. 2. 
at the sound of the last trumpet, or voice of Christ, the archangel, the very same bodies which the elect had before, though turned to dust and earth, shall arise again. And in the same instant, every man's soul shall re-enter into his own body, by virtue of the resurrection of Christ, the head, and be made alive and rise out of their graves, as if they did but awake out of their beds. And howsoever tyrants bemangled their bodies in pieces, or consumed them to ashes, yet shall the elect find it true at that day, that not an hair of their head is perished. 3. They shall come forth out of their graves, like so many Joseph's out of prison, or Daniel's out of the lion's den, or Jonah's out of the whale's belly. 4. All the bodies of the elect being thus made alive, shall arise in that perfection of nature whereunto they should have attained by their natural temperament, if no impediment had hindered, and in that vigor of age, that a perfect man is at about three and thirty years old, each in their proper sex. To which divines think the apostle alludes when he saith, Do we all come unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the age or stature of the fullness of Christ, f. if. 13. Whatsoever imperfection was before in the body, as blindness, lameness, crookedness, shall then be done away. Jacob shall not halt, nor Isaac be blind, nor leap eyed nor Mephibosheth lame. For if David would not have the blind and lame to come into his house, much less will Christ have blindness and lameness to dwell in his heavenly habitation. Christ made all the blind to see, the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, that came to him to seek his grace on earth. Much more will he heal all their imperfections whom he will admit to his glory in heaven. Among those tribes, there is not one feeble, but the lame man shall leap as an heart, and the dumb man's tongue shall sing. And it is very probable, that seeing God created our first parents, not infants or old men, but of a perfect age or stature, the anaplasis, or new creation from death, shall every way be more perfect than the places, or first frame of man, from which he fell into the state of the dead. Neither is it like that infancy, being imperfection, and old age corruption, can well stand with the state of a perfect glorified body. 5. The bodies of the elect being thus raised, shall have four most excellent and supernatural qualities. 4. 1. They shall be raised in power, whereby they shall forever be freed from all wants and weakness, and enabled to continue, without the use of meat, drink, sleep, and other former helps. 2. In incorruption, whereby they shall never be subject to any manner of imperfections, blemish, sickness, or death. 3. In glory, whereby their bodies shall shine as bright as the sun in the firmament, and which being made transparent, their souls shall shine through far more glorious than their bodies. Three glimpses of which glory were seen, first, in Moses's face, secondly, in the transfiguration, thirdly, in Stephen's countenance, three instances and assurances of the glorification of our bodies at that glorious day. Then shall David lay aside his shepherd's wheat, and put on the robe of the king's son, Jesus, not Jonathan's. Then every true Mordecai, who mourned under the sackcloth of this corrupt flesh, shall be arrayed with the king's royal apparel, and have the crown royal set upon his head, that all the world may see how it shall be done to him whom the king of kings delighteth to honor. If now the rising of one sun make the morning so glorious, how glorious shall that day be, when innumerable millions of millions of bodies of saints and angels shall appear more glorious than the brightness of the sun, the body of Christ in glory surpassing all. Dot in agility, whereby our bodies shall be able to ascend, and meet the Lord at his glorious coming in the air, as eagles flying unto their blessed carcass. To this agility of the glorious bodies of the saints the prophet alludes, saying, They shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run, and not be weary, they shall walk, and not faint, Isa. XL. 31. And to this state may that saying of wisdom be referred. In the time of their vision they shall shine, and run to and fro, as sparks among the stubble. And in respect of these four qualities, Paul calleth the raised bodies of the elect spiritual, for they shall be spiritual in qualities, but the same still in substance. And howsoever sin and corruption make a man, in this state of mortality, lower than angels, yet surely, when God shall thus crown him with glory and honor, I cannot see how man shall be anything inferior to angels. For are they spirits? So is man also in respect of his soul. Yea, more than this, they shall have also a spiritual body, fashioned like unto the glorious body of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom man's nature is exalted by a personal union into the glory of the Godhead, and individual society of the blessed Trinity, an honor which he never vouchsafed angels. And in this respect man hath a prerogative above them. Nay, they are but spirits appointed to be ministers unto the elect, and as many of them, who at the first disdained this office, and would not keep their first standing, were for their pride hold into hell. This lesson of not the dignity of angels, but extols the greatness of God's love to mankind. But as for all the elect, who at that second and sudden coming of Christ shall be found quick and living, the fire that shall burn up the corruption of the world, and the works therein, shall in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, overtake them as it finds them either grinding in the mill of provision, or walking in the fields of pleasure, or lying in the bed of ease, and so, burning up the dross and corruption of mortal, make them immortal bodies. And this change shall be unto them instead of death.
Then should the soul with joyfulness greet her body, saying, O oh, well met again, my dear sister, how sweet is thy voice, how comey is thy countenance, having lain hid so long in the clefts of the rocks, and in the secret places of the grave. Thou art indeed an habitation fit, not only for me to dwell in, but such as the Holy Ghost thinks me to reside in, as his temple, forever. The winter of our affliction is now past, the storm of our misery is blown over and gone. The bodies of our elect brethren appear more glorious than the lily flowers on the earth, the time of singing hallelujah is come, and the voice of the trumpet is heard in the land. Thou hast been my yoke fellow in the Lord's labors, and companion in persecutions and wrongs, for Christ and his gospel's sake, now shall we enter together into our master's joy. As thou hast borne with me the cross, so shalt thou now wear with me the crown. As thou hast with me sowed plenteously in tears, so shalt thou reap with me abundantly in joy. O oh blessed, ever blessed be that God, who, when yonder reprobates spend their whole time in pride, fleshly lusts, eating, drinking, and profane vanities, gave us grace to join together in watching, fasting, praying, reading the scriptures, keeping his sabbaths, hearing sermons, receiving the holy communion, relieving the poor, exercising, in all humility, the works of piety to God, and walking consciously in the duties of our calling towards men. Thou shalt, anon, hear no mention of thy sins, for they are remitted and covered, but every good work which thou hast done for the Lord's sake, shall be rehearsed and rewarded. Cheer up thy heart, for thy judge is flesh of thy flesh, and bone of thy bone. Lift up thy head, behold these glorious angels, like so many Gabriels, flying towards us, to tell us that the day of our redemption is come, and to convey us in the clouds to meet our Redeemer in the air. Lo, they are at hand. Arise, therefore, my dove, my love, my fair one, and come away. And so, like rose, or young hearts, they run with angels towards Christ, over the trembling mountains of Bela. 6. Both quick and dead be thus revived and glorified, shall forthwith, by the ministry of God's holy angels, be gathered from all the quarters and parts of the world, and caught up together in the clouds, to meet the Lord, in the air, and so shall come with him, as a part of his glorious train, to judge the reprobates and evil angels. The twelve apostles shall sit upon twelve thrones, next Christ, to judge the twelve tribes, who refused to hear the gospel preached by their ministry, and all the saints, in honor and order, shall stand next to them, as judges also, to judge the evil angels, and earthly-minded men. And as every of them received grace in this life to be more zealous of his glory, and more faithful in his service, than others, so shall their glory and reward be greater than others in that day. The place whither they shall be gathered unto Christ, and where Christ shall sit in judgment, shall be in the air, over the valley of Jehoshaphat, by Mount Olivet, near to Jerusalem, eastward from the temple, as it is probable, for four reasons. 1. Because the Holy Scripture seems to intimate, so much in plain words. I will gather all nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and plead with them there. Cause thy mighty one to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about, jolly. 1, 2, 11, 12. Jehoshaphat signifieth, the Lord will judge. And this valley was so called from the great victory which the Lord gave Jehoshaphat and his people over the Ammonites, Moabites, and inhabitants of Mount Seir, which victory was a type of the final victory which Christ, the supreme judge, shall give his elect over all their enemies in that place of the last day, as also the Jews interpret it, all agreeing that the place shall be thereabouts. 2. Because that as Christ was thereabouts crucified and put to open shame, so over that place his glorious throne should be erected in the air, when he shall appear in judgment to manifest his majesty and glory. For it is meet that Christ should in that place judge the world with righteous judgment, where he himself was unjustly judged and condemned. 3. Because that seeing the angels shall be sent to gather together the elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, it is most probable that the place whither they shall be gathered to shall be near Jerusalem and the valley of Jehoshaphat which cosmographers describe to be in the midst of the superficies of the earth. If the Tamini Agrav Quibus be the four parts of the world, the terminus ad quem must be about the center. 4. Because the angels told the disciples that as they saw Christ ascend from Mount Olivet, which is over the valley of Jehoshaphat, so he shall in like manner come down from heaven. This is the opinion of Aquinas, and all the schoolmen, except Lombard and Alexander Hales. 5. Lastly, when Christ is set in his glorious throne, and all the many thousands of his saints and angels, shining more bright than so many suns in glory, sitting about him, and the body of Christ in glory and brightness are surpassing them all, the reprobates being separate, and remaining beneath upon the earth, for the right hand signifieth a blessed, the left hand the cursed estate, Christ will first pronounce the sentence of bliss upon the elect, and he will thereby increase the grief of the reprobate that shall hear it, and he will shew himself more prone to mercy than to judgment. And thus, from his throne of majesty in the air, he will, in the sight and hearing of all the world, pronounce unto his elect, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the beginning of the world, etc. Matt. XXV. 34. Come ye. Here is our blessed union with Christ, and, by him, with the whole trinity. Blessed.
here is our absolution from all sins, and our plenary endowment with all grace and happiness. Of my Father, here is the author from whom, by Christ, proceeds our felicity. Inherit. Here is our adoption, the kingdom. Behold our birthright and possession. Prepared. See God's fatherly care for his chosen. From the foundation of the world. O oh, the free, eternal, unchangeable election of God. How much are those souls bound to love God, who of his mere good will and pleasure, chose and loved them before they had done either good or evil. For I was hungry, etc. O oh, the goodness of Christ, who takes notice of all the good works of his children to reward them. How great is his love to poor Christians, who takes every work of mercy done to them for his sake, as if it had been done to himself. Come ye to me, in whom ye have believed before ye saw me, and whom ye have loved and sought for with so much devotion, and through so many tribulations. Come now from labor to rest, from disgrace to glory, from the jaws of death to the joys of eternal life. For my sake ye have been railed upon, reviled, and cursed, but now it shall appear to all those cursed essors, that you are the true Jacobs that shall receive your heavenly Father's blessing, and blessed shall you be. Your fathers, mothers, and nearest kindred, forsook and cast you off for my truth's sake which you maintained, but now my Father will be unto you a father, and you shall be his sons and daughters forever. You were cast out of your lands and livings, and forsook all for my sake and the Gospels. But that it may appear that you have not lost your gain, but gained by your loss, instead of an earthly inheritance and possessions, you shall possess with me the inheritance of my heavenly kingdom. We shall be for love, sons, for birthright, heirs, for dignity, kings, for holiness, priests, and you may be bold to enter into the possession of it now, because my father prepared and kept it for you ever since the first foundation of the world was laid. Immediately after this sentence of absolution and benediction, every one receiveth his crown, which Christ the righteous judge puts upon their heads, as the reward which he hath promised, of his grace and mercy to the faith and good works of all them that loved this appearing. Then every one taking his crown from this head, shall lay it down, as it were, at the feet of Christ, and prostrating themselves, shall with one heart and voice, in an heavenly sort and consort, say, Praise, and honour, and glory, and power, and thanks, be unto thee, O blessed Lamb, who sittest upon the throne, wert killed, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, to reign with thee in thy kingdom for evermore. Amen. Then shall they sit in their thrones and order, as judges of the reprobates, and evil angels, by approving, and giving testimony to the righteous sentence and judgment of Christ the supreme judge. After the pronouncing of the reprobates' sentence and condemnation, Christ will perform two solemn actions. 1. The presenting of all the elect unto his Father, Behold, O righteous Father, these are they whom thou gavest me. I have kept them, and none of them is lost. I gave them thy word, and they believed it, and the world hated them, because they were not of the world, even as I was not of the world. And now, Father, I will that those whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, and that I may be in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and that thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. 2. Christ shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, that is, shall cease to execute his office of mediatorship, whereby, as he is king, priest, prophet, and supreme head of the church, he suppressed his enemies, and ruled his faithful people by his spirit, word, and sacraments so that his kingdom of grace over his church in this world ceasing, he shall rule immediately, as he is God, equal with the Father, and the Holy Ghost, in his kingdom of glory evermore. Not that the dignity of his manhood shall be anything diminished, but that the glory of his Godhead shall be more manifested. So that as he is God, he shall from thenceforth in all fullness, without all external means, rule all in all. From this tribunal seat, Christ shall arise, and with all his glorious company of elect angels and saints, he shall go up triumphantly, in order and array, unto the heaven of heavens, with such a heavenly noise and music, that now may that song of David be truly verified. God is gone up with a triumph, the Lord with the sound of the trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, he is greatly to be exalted. And that marriage song of John, let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The third and last degree of the blessed state of a regenerate man after death, begins after the pronouncing of the sentence, and lasteth eternally without all end. Meditations of the blessed state of a regenerate man in heaven. Hear my meditation azels, and my pen falls out of my hand, the one being not able to conceive, nor the other to describe, that most excellent bliss, and eternal weight of glory, whereof all the afflictions of this present life are not worthy, which all the elect shall with the blessed trinity enjoy, from that time that they shall be received with Christ, as joint heirs into that everlasting kingdom of joy. Notwithstanding, we may take a scantling thereof. 
the holy scriptures thus set forth to our capacity the glory of our eternal and heavenly life after death in four respects first of the place second of the object 3d of the prerogatives of the elect there fourth of the effects of these prerogatives one of the place the place is the heaven of heavens or the third heaven called paradise with a christ in his human nature ascended far above all visible heavens the bridegroom's chamber, which by the firmament, as by an azured curtain spangled with glittering stars and glorious planets, is hid, that we cannot behold it with these corruptible eyes of flesh. The Holy Ghost framing himself to our weakness, describes the glory of that place, which no man can estimate, by such things as are most precious in the estimation of man, and therefore likeneth it to a great and holy city, named the heavenly Jerusalem, where only God and his people who are saved and written in the Lamb's book, do inhabit, all built of pure gold, like unto clear glass or crystal, the walls of jasper stone. The foundations of the walls garnished with twelve manner of precious stones, having twelve gates, each built of one pearl. Three gates towards each of the four corners of the world, and at each gate an angel, as so many porters, that no unclean thing should enter into it. It is four square, therefore perfect. The length, the breadth, and height of it are equal, twelve thousand furlongs every way, therefore glorious and spacious. Through the midst of her streets ever runneth a pure river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, and on the other side the river is the tree of life, ever growing, which bears twelve manner of fruits, and gives fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are health to the nations. There is therefore no place so glorious by creation, so beautiful with delectation, so rich in possession, so comfortable for habitation. For there, the king is Christ, dash the law is love, the honor, verity, the peace, felicity, the life, eternity. There is light without darkness, mirth without sadness, health without sickness, wealth without want, credit without disgrace, beauty without blemish, ease without labor, riches without rust, blessings without misery, and consolation that never knoweth an end. How truly may we cry out with David, of this city, glorious things are spoken of thee, O thou city of God. Sal. Lux Xvei. 3. And yet all these things are spoken, but according to the weakness of our capacity. For heaven exceedeth all this in glory, so far, as that no tongue is able to express, nor heart of man to conceive, the glory thereof, as witnesseth Saint Paul, who was in it, and saw it. O oh, let us not then dote so much upon these wooden cottages, and houses of mouldering clay, which are but the tents of ungodliness, and habitation of sinners, but let us look rather, and long for this heavenly city, whose builder and maker is God, which he, who is not ashamed to be called our God hath prepared for us. 2. Of the Object the blissful and glorious object of all intellectual and reasonable creatures in heaven is the Godhead, in trinity of persons, without which there is neither joy nor felicity, but the very fullness of joy consisteth in enjoying the same. This object we shall enjoy two ways. 1. By a beatific vision of God. 2. By possessing an immediate communion with this divine nature. The beatifical vision of God is that only that can content the infinite mind of man. For everything tendeth to its center. God is the center of the soul. Therefore, like Noah's dove, she cannot rest nor joy till she return and enjoy him. All that God bestowed upon Moses could not satisfy his mind, unless he might see the face of God, therefore the whole church prayeth so earnestly, God be merciful unto us, and cause his face to shine upon us. When Paul once had seen this blessed sight, he ever after counted all the riches and glory of the world, in respect of it, to be but dung, and all his life after was but a sighing out, Cupio dissolvi, I desire to be dissolved, and to be with Christ. And Christ prayed for all his elect in his last prayer, that they might obtain this blessed vision. Father, I will that they which thou hast given me be, where, even where I am, to what end, that they may behold my glory, etc. If Moses' face did so shine, when he had been with God but forty days, and seen but his back parts, how shall we shine, when we shall see him face to face forever, and know him as we are known, and as he is? Then shall the soul no longer be termed Mara, bitterness, but Naomi, beautifulness, for the Lord shall turn her short bitterness to an eternal beauty and blessedness. The second means to enjoy this object is, by having an immediate and an eternal communion with God in heaven. This we have, first, by being, as members of Christ, united to his manhood, and as by the manhood, personally united to the word, we are united to him, as he is God, and, by his Godhead, to the whole trinity, reprobates at the last day see God, as a just judge, to punish them, but, for lack of this communion, they shall have neither grace with him, nor glory from him. For want of this communion, the devils, when they saw Christ, cried out, Quid nobis tecum? What have we to do with thee, O Son of the Most High God? But, by virtue of this communion, the penitent soul may boldly go and say unto Christ, as Ruth unto Bose, Spread, O Christ, the wing of the garment of thy mercy over thine handmaid, for thou art my kinsman. This communion God promised Abraham, when he gave himself for his great reward. And Christ prayeth for his whole church to obtain it. This communion Saint Paul expresseth in one word, saying, that God shall be all in all to us. Indeed, 
God is now all in all to us, but by means, and in a small measure. But in heaven, God himself immediately, in fullness of measure, without all means, will be unto us all the good things, that our souls and bodies can wish or desire. He himself will be salvation and joy to our souls, life and health to our bodies, beauty to our eyes, music to our ears, honey to our mouths, perfume to our nostrils, light to our understandings, contentment to our wills, and delight to our hearts. And what can be lacking, where God himself will be the soul of our souls? Yea, all the strength, wit, pleasures, virtues, colors, beauties, harmony and goodness, that are in men, beasts, fishes, fowls, trees, herbs, and all creatures, are nothing but sparkles of those things which are in infinite perfection in God and in him we shall enjoy them in a far more perfect and blessed manner. He himself will then supply their use. Nay, the best creatures which serve us now shall not have the honor to serve us then. There will be no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in that city, for the glory of God doth light it. No more will there be any need or use of any creature when we shall enjoy the Creator himself. When, therefore, we behold anything that is excellent in any creatures, let us say to ourselves, how much more excellent is he who gave them this excellency, when we behold the wisdom of men, who over all creatures stronger than themselves, outrun the sun and moon in discourse, prescribing many years before in what courses they shall be eclipsed, let us say to ourselves, how admirable is the wisdom of God, who made men so wise. When we consider the strength of whales and elephants, the tempest of winds, and terror of thunder, let us say to ourselves, how strong, how mighty, how terrible is that God, that makes these mighty and fearful creatures. When we taste things that are delicately sweet, let us say to ourselves, Oh how sweet is that God from whom all these creatures have received this sweetness. When we behold the admirable colors which are in flowers and birds, and all the lovely beauty of nature, let us say, How fair is that God that made thee so fair. And if our loving God hath thus provided us so many excellent delights, for our passage through this bottom, or valley of tears, what are those pleasures which he hath prepared for us, when we shall enter into the palace of our master's joy? How shall our souls be there ravished with the love of so lovely a God? So glorious is the object of heavenly saints. So amiable is the sight of our gracious Saviour. 3. Of the prerogatives which the elect shall enjoy in heaven. By reason of this communion with God, the elect in heaven shall have four super-excellent prerogatives. 1. They shall have the kingdom of heaven for their inheritance, and they shall be free denizens of the heavenly Jerusalem. Saint Paul, by being a free citizen of Rome, escaped whipping, but they who are once free citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, shall ever be freed from the whips of eternal torments. For this freedom was bought for us, not with a great sum of money, but with the precious blood of the Son of God. 2. They shall all be kings and priests, spiritual kings, to reign with Christ, and to triumph over Satan and the world, and spiritual priests, to offer to God the spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving forevermore. And therefore they are said to wear both crowns and robes. Oh, what a comfort is this to poor parents that have many children. If they breed them up in the fear of God, and to be true Christians, then are they parents too, so many kings and priests. 3. Their bodies shall shine as the brightness of the sun in the firmament, like the glorious body of Christ, which shined brighter than the sun at noon, when it appeared to Paul. A glimpse of which glorious brightness appeared in the bodies of Moses and Elias, transfigured with our Lord in the holy mount. Therefore, saith the Apostle, it shall rise a glorious body, yea, a spiritual body, not in substance, but in quality, preserved by spiritual means, and having, as an angel, agility to ascend or descend. Oh, what an honor is it, that our bodies, falling more vile than carrion, should thus arise in glory, like unto the body of the Son of God. For, lastly, they, together with all the holy angels, they keep, without any labor to distract them, a perpetual Sabbath, to the glory, honor, and praise of God, for the creating, redeeming, and sanctifying the church, and for his power, wisdom, justice, mercy, and goodness, in the government of heaven and earth. When thou hearest a sweet concert of music, meditate how happy thou shalt be, when, with the choir of heavenly angels and saints, thou shalt sing a part in that spiritual alleluia, in that eternal blessed Sabbath, where there shall be such variety of pleasures, and satiety of joys, as neither no tediousness in doing, nor end in delighting. 4. Of the effects of those prerogatives. From these prerogatives there will arise to the elect in heaven, five notable effects. 1. They shall know God with a perfect knowledge, so far as creatures can possibly comprehend the Creator. For there we shall see the Word, the Creator, and in the Word, all creatures that by the Word were created, so that we shall not need to learn, of the things which were made, the knowledge of Him by whom all things were made. The most excellent creatures in this life, are but as a dark veil drawn between God and us, but when this veil shall be drawn aside, then shall we see God face to face, and know Him as we are known. We shall know the power of the Father, the wisdom of the Son, the grace of the Holy Ghost, and the indivisible nature of the Blessed Trinity. And in him we shall know, not only all our friends who died in the faith of Christ, but also all the faithful that ever were, or shall be. 4. 1. 
Christ tells the Jews that they shall see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, therefore we shall know them. 2. Adam in his innocency knew Eve to be bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh as soon as he waked, much more then shall we know our kindred when we shall awake perfected and glorified in the resurrection. 3. The apostles knew Christ after his resurrection and the saints which rose with him and appeared in the holy city. 4. Peter, James and John knew Moses and Elias in the transfiguration, how much more shall we know one another when we shall be all glorified? 5. Dives knew Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, much more shall the elect know one another in heaven. 6. Christ saith that the twelve apostles shall sit upon twelve thrones to judge at that day the twelve tribes, therefore they shall be known, and consequently the rest of the saints. 7. Paul saith that at that day we shall know as we are known of God, and Augustine out of this place comforteth a widow, assuring her that as in this life she saw her husband with external eyes, so in the life to come she should know his heart and what were all his thoughts and imaginations. Then, husbands and wives, look to your actions and thoughts, for all shall be made manifest one day. 8. The faithful in the Old Testament are said to be gathered to their fathers, therefore the knowledge of our friends remains. 9. Love never falleth away, therefore knowledge, the ground thereof, remains in another life. 10. Because the last day shall be a declaration of the just judgment of God, when he shall reward every man according to his works, and if every man's work be brought to light, much more the worker, and if wicked men shall account for every idle word, much more shall the idle speakers themselves be known. And if the persons be not known, in vain are the works made manifest. Therefore, saith the apostle, every man shall appear to account for the work that he hath done in his body, etc. 1 Cor. V. 10. Though the respect of diversities of degrees and callings in magistracy, ministry, and economy shall cease, yea, Christ shall then cease to rule, as he is mediator, and rule all in all, as he is God equal with the Father and the Holy Ghost. The greatest knowledge that men can attain to in this life comes as far short of the knowledge which we shall have in heaven, as the knowledge of a child that cannot yet speak plain, comes of the knowledge of the greatest philosopher in the world. They who thirst for knowledge, let them long to be students of this university. For all the light by which we know anything in this world, is nothing but the very shadow of God, but when we shall know God in heaven, we shall in him know the manner of the work of the creation. The mysteries of the work of our redemption, yea, so much knowledge as a creature can possibly conceive and comprehend of the Creator and his works. But whilst we are in this life, we may say with Job, how little a portion hear we of him. Job's Ksvi. 14. 2. They shall love God with as perfect and absolute a love as possibly a creature can do. The manner of loving God is to love him for himself, the measure is to love him without measure. For in this life, knowing God but in part, we love him but in part, but when the elect in heaven shall fully know God, then they will perfectly love God. And for the infinite causes of love, which they shall know to be in him, they shall be infinitely ravished with the love of him. 3. They shall be filled with all manner of divine pleasures. At thy right hand, saith David, there are pleasures forevermore, Sal. Zvi. 11. Yea, they shall drink, saith he, out of the river of pleasures, Sal. Zvi. 8. For as soon as the soul is admitted into the actual fruition of the beatifical essence of God, she hath all the goodness, beauty, glory, and perfection of all creatures, in all the world, united together, and at once presented to her in the sight of God. If any delight in fairness, the fairest beauty is but a dusky shadow to that. He that delights in pleasures shall there find infinite varieties, without either interruption of grief, or distraction of pain. He that loveth honor shall there enjoy it, without the disgrace of cankered envy. He that loveth treasure shall there possess it, and never be beguiled of it. There they shall have knowledge void of all ignorance, health that no sickness shall impair, and life that no death can determine. How happy, then, shall we be, when this life is changed, and we translate it thither. For they shall be replenished with an unspeakable joy. In thy presence, saith David, is the fullness of joy. And this joy shall rise chiefly from the vision of God, and partly from the sight of all the holy angels, and blessed souls of just and perfect men, who are in bliss and glory with them, but especially from the blissful sight of Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament, our Emmanuel, God made man. His sight will be the chief cause of our bliss and joy. If the Israelites in Jerusalem so shouted for joy, that the earth rang again, to see Solomon crowned, how should the elect rejoice in heaven, to see Christ, the true Solomon, adorned with glory? If John Baptist, at his presence, did leap in his mother's womb for joy, how shall we exult for joy, when he will be with us in heaven? If the wise men rejoiced so greatly, to find him a babe, lying in a manger, how great shall the joy of the elect be, to see him sit, as a king, in his celestial throne? If Simeon was glad to see him an infant, in the temple, presented by the hands of the priest, how great shall our joy be to see him a king, ruling all things, at the right hand of his father. If Joseph and Mary were so joyful to find him in the midst of the doctors in the temple, how glad shall our souls be, to see him sitting, as Lord, among angels in heaven.
This is that joy of our Master, which, as the Apostle saith, the eye hath not seen, the ear hath not heard, nor the heart of man can conceive. Which, because it cannot enter into us, we shall enter into it. 5. Lastly, they shall enjoy this blissful and glorious state forevermore. Therefore it is termed everlasting's life. And Christ saith, that our joy shall no man take from us. All other joys, be they never so great, have an end. Ahasuerus's feast lasted an hundred and eighty days. But he and it and all his joys are gone. For mortal man to be assumed to heavenly glory, to be associated to angels, to be satiated with all delights and joys, but for a time, were much. But to enjoy them forever, without intermission or end. Who can hear it, and not admire? All the saints of Christ, as soon as they felt once but a true taste of these eternal joys, counted all the riches and pleasures of this life to be but loss and dung, in respect of that. And therefore, with incessant prayers, fasting, alms deeds, tears, faith, and good life, they labored to ascertain themselves of this eternal life, and for the love of it, they willingly either sold or parted with all their earthly goods and possessions. Christ calleth Christians merchants, and eternal life a precious pearl, which a wise merchant will purchase, though it cost him all that he hath. Alexander hearing the report of the great riches of the eastern country, divided forthwith among his captains and soldiers all his kingdom of Macedonia. Hephaestion asking him, what he meant in so doing. Alexander answered, that he preferred the riches of India, whereof he hoped shortly to be master, before all that his father Philip had left him in Macedonia. And should not Christians, then, prefer the eternal riches of heaven, so greatly renowned, which they shall enjoy ere long, before the corruptible things of this world, which last but for a season? Abraham and Sarah left their own country and possessions, to look for a city whose builder and maker is God, and therefore bought no land, but only a place of burial. David preferred one day in this place before a thousand elsewhere, yea, to be a doorkeeper in the house of God, rather than to dwell in the richest tabernacles of wickedness. Elias earnestly besought the Lord to receive his soul into his kingdom, and went willingly, though in a fiery chariot, thither. Saint Paul, having once seen heaven, continually desired to be dissolved, that he might be with Christ. Peter, having espied but a glimpse of that eternal glory in the mount, wished that he might dwell there all the days of his life, saying, Master, it is good for us to be here. How much better does Peter now think it to be in heaven itself? Christ, a little before his death, prayed his father to receive him into that excellent glory. And the apostle witnesseth, that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, and despised the shame. Hip. Zai. 2. If a man did but once see those joys, if it were possible, he would endure an hundred deaths to enjoy that happiness but one day. Augustine saith, that he would be content to endure the torments of hell to gain this joy, rather than to lose it. Ignatius, Paul's scholar, being threatened, as he was going to suffer, with the cruelty of torments, answered, with great courage of faith, fire, gallows, beasts, breaking of my bones, quartering of my members, crushing of my body, all the torments of the devil together, let them come upon me, so I may enjoy my Lord Jesus, and his kingdom. The like constancy shewed Polycarp, who could not by any terrors of any kind of death, be moved to deny Christ in the least measure. With the like resolution Basil answered his persecutors, when they would terrify him with death. I will never, said he, fear death, which can do no more than restore me to him that made me. If Ruth left her own country, and followed Naomi, her mother-in-law, to go and dwell with her in the land of Canaan, which was but a type of heaven, only upon the fame which she heard of the God of Israel, though she had no promise of any portion in it. How shouldst thou follow Christ into the heavenly canon, where God has given thee an eternal inheritance, assured by an holy covenant, made in the word of God, signed with the blood of his Son, and sealed with his spirit and sacraments? This shall be thine eternal happiness in the kingdom of heaven, where thy life shall be a communion with the blessed Trinity, thy joy, the presence of the Lamb, thy exercise, singing, thy song, hallelujah, thy consorts, saints and angels. Where youth flourishes, that never waxeth old, beauty lasts that never fadeth, love abounds, that never cooleth, health continues, that never slacketh, and life remains, that never endeth. Meditations directing a Christian how to apply to himself, without delay, the foresaid knowledge of God and himself. Thou seest, therefore, O man, how wretched and cursed thy state is, by corruption of nature, without Christ. In image, that as the scriptures liken wicked men to lions, bears, bulls, horses, dogs, and such like savage creatures, in their lives, it is certain that the condition of an unregenerate man is in his death more vile than a dog, or the filthiest creature in the world. For the beast, being made but for man's use, when he dies, ends all his miseries with his death, but man, endued with a reasonable and an immortal soul, made after God's image, to serve God, when he ends the miseries of this life, must account for all his misdeeds, and begin to endure those miseries that never shall know end. No creature but man is liable to yield at his death an account for his life. The brute creatures, not having reason, shall not be required to make any account for their deeds. And good angels, though they have reason, yet shall they yield no account, because they have no sin. 
and as for evil angels, they are without all hope already condemned, so that they need not make any further accounts. Man only in his death must be God's accountant for his life. On the other side thou seest, O man, how happy and blessed thy estate is, being truly reconciled to God in Christ, in that, through the restoration of God's image, and thy restitution into thy sovereignty over other creatures, thou art in this life little inferior to the angels, and shalt be in the life to come equal to the angels. Yea, in respect of thy nature, exalted by a personal union to the Son of God, and by him to the glory of the Trinity, superior to the angels, a fellow brother with angels in spiritual grace and everlasting glory. Thou hast seen how glorious and perfect God is, and how that all thy chief bliss and happiness consists in having an eternal communion with him. Now, therefore, O impenitent sinner, in the bowels of Christ Jesus I entreat thee, nay, I conjure thee, as thou tenderest thine own salvation, seriously to consider with me, how false, how vain, how vile, are those things which still retain and chain thee in this wretched and cursed estate wherein thou livest, and which hinder thee from the favor of God, and the hope of eternal life and happiness.